Let me paint a picture for you here today. It's one to maybe zero degrees. Visibility, I can just about see that much in front of me. It's absolutely freezing. But Renault have given me the new Megane Tourer E-Tech to review, and I've got to do it. So let's start with all Tourer cars at the boot, because if they're worth anything, they can fit things like this inside. By the way, welcome to the channel if it's, uh, if it's your first time. I, I'm normally a bit warmer than usual. So this boot is deep, not massively deep for a Tourer, I will say, but definitely bigger than a hatchback. And can it get this kind of stuff easily in? Well, yeah, because there's no lip here. That boot cover might get in the way, but if you want to keep that hidden from prying eyes, you have a little holder like that that clicks into place. And then a big box of chocolates that nobody actually wants is hidden away from view. Welcome to the review. It's called a modular boot. Modular. If anyone knows what that means, please leave a comment below. I'm not being mean. The side of the car, those wheels are hideous. They're too small. They're like a really good looking French man in a lovely suit, but he has mucky black communion shoes on with the suit. They just don't suit the car, it's too big, they're too small. Maybe even if they were a bit bigger, it'd be fine. Uh, you get a little E-Tech plug-in hybrid badge here to tell everybody that you're green. Of course you are green. I'm green with envy if you're at home watching this in the warmth. It's absolutely freezing. The back is an interesting space. They've been very generous back here because there's two USB charging solutions, two vents to keep yourself warm. And then they've cut back another way, he's like there's no center armrest, there's a bit of a hump still on the floor. This gray headlining makes it a bit brighter. I'd imagine if that was black, it would be quite dark. Storage pockets here. Driver seats at their lowest height setting. Uh, it's hard to get your legs under. Um, I like. Legroom is okay if you had a taller, over six foot driver and a longer person here, they might struggle for legroom, but the head height is, is quite okay. The way the bench sits, it's quite far removed from your leg. So there's no real, I just don't know, on a, on a long journey, this will be better suited for kids, of which, by the way, you'll get two child seats, no problem into the back, obviously, uh, two eyes fix on either side. But let's discuss the price because that bit is very good. You see, this facelifted version of the Megane has things like an RS trim option now, which really does look very, very nice. There's loads of options when it comes to finance as well, because in 2021, they're doing 211 on finance, and there's a five-year warranty on the car. And the interesting thing about this is, for a plug-in hybrid, after grants, this car, in touring form, is a little over 25,000 euro. And as you know, if you're looking at these types of vehicles, they always seem to be a little bit dearer. Not with this. If your Megane has these LED Pure Vision headlights, you'll get to experience just how good they are. Uh, the strip goes across the front of the car and that, that looks good, but the real benefit is, in the dark, they are super, super bright. So this car has a just under 10 kilowatt hour battery plus a 1.6 petrol engine. There's still diesel though, there's still petrol. There's something for everybody. And I suppose it's heading in the direction of when there's a full on Megane EV in the not too distant future. If you want the Megane hatch version with this E-Tech engine, that'll be coming along early 2021. There's a whole lot of different driving modes. So let's discuss them here now and I'll show you the front of the car also. Everything in here is as you'd get in a normal car. Don't be worried about, oh, what do I have to do to make it be a hybrid? Nothing. You push the button there and it does everything for you. You can even control what mode you're in by pressing this button down here, which looks like a fan. Armrest is good. Uh, all these lights inside the car, you can change colors on them. And I like green because we're saving the planet. And you might like red if you're feeling I, I, I don't know. There's no heated seats in this car. There's no heated steering wheel in this car. Today of all days, I really wish 
It had it. Um, if you go into your vehicle info, you can see your energy that you're saving. You can set up when you're driving into your different modes. So press that button. When you click into the settings of it, you can change how sporty the steering feels, the powertrain, do you want that to be sport, or do you want that to be more economical, and everything has a return button on it. It's a touch screen, it's nice and bright and colorful. Plastics, decent, glove box, absolutely useless, it's tiny. Uh, two further USBs down here, an auxiliary, and even a 12 volt, they are spoiling you. Criticism may be that uh, the little tray here just about fits today's phones. Um, this moving thing here will allow you control how much space you have for cups, but wouldn't be much cup holder action going on here. There's your key. Tiny. Leave it in your pocket. Don't have to touch the doors as you walk away. It locks for you. Works every single time. It's a nice feature. Um, you get lane keep assist and you get the little speed of the flashes red when you go over the speed limit and you've got collision avoidance. This one has parking that will do it for you and it will tell you what to do but I've never managed to actually use that. There's knobs for aircon, there's buttons for heat demisting, all that kind of stuff so you don't have to go through menus to do those things. Some people, that absolutely drives them mad. You've got wired CarPlay and Android Auto. You've got your sat-nav, which is nice and bright and clear and fast moving. And the center console, it's quite big. It's like a tablet form, really. And thankfully, if you haven't noticed by now, Renault have put the cruise control on the steering wheel where it should be. It used to be down there, believe it or not. Well, one part of activating it was. Seats are wonderfully comfortable, nice bolsters on either side, really are good for long journeys. If there was little leg extenders, it would complete the package, but again, I'm nitpicking here. It's, uh, it, feels, it feels pretty good, and um, they just make nice seats. Well done, Renault, you make, you make nice seats. Jesus, lads, it's freezing. Even though you've got batteries in the back, still has a boot capacity of 447 litres, which is pretty good by hybrid batteries in the back standards. They're still doing the RS Trophy version of the car, even though it's heading for 2021 and everyone's worried about everything. And I like the way they've got solutions like this. And then they also still want to do the RS Trophy, which is absolutely deadly. The car can also identify when you're drowsy by your steering wheel movements and Traffic Jam Companion will keep up and down with car speeds and even take off again once the car in front moves within three seconds and that works very nicely with an automatic gearbox. Naturally enough because it is now in electric mode it's all lovely and smooth and quiet and overall this car does handle nicely on wonderful Irish roads. Now the wheels as we've discussed are not the biggest in the world so I would like to try it on a bigger set of wheels, less profile rubber going on, but for this journey, for this type of road environment in Ireland, and probably the UK as well, it's very, very comfortable. Now once you've got charge in your battery, it's a nippy car in terms of accelerating, and when you feel the engine take over, when it has to, it's not always the smoothest transition. Like you can really feel it, you can hear it. And sometimes if it was, if you were braking and you were using uh, engine mode, it, it's just a bit kind of juddery or something. I, I don't know. And it, it, when the weather wasn't as cold this week, the charged battery had a range of about 40 kilometers. When it was cold and still fully charged, was at 24. The range is also, it's lost two bars on the electric uh, range and it's down to 17 kilometers. So it, feel, it feels very electric now. It has that kind of urgency about it. So on a good day with weather not being affected by temperatures, that's the kind of range you're, you're going to get. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. It's 40 kilometers, gets you in and out of your job, more than likely. Um, 
You seem to be able to also put some power back into that battery using the petrol engine. I would, you know, unless you really, for whatever reason, that you're gonna burn more fuel to do that, which is the total opposite of the whole point of trying to um, save money and be, econom be economical with a plug-in hybrid. So just, I think use it for the normal um, petrol engine of, of what it is when you're out of juice in the battery. Having said that, if you charge this car, as I say, with all plug-in hybrids and you get into a habit of doing it, like I'll show you now in a second how little petrol I've used and I've been driving this car for five days. I mean, it has barely, it's barely moved off the top of the, the full range. So it is very economical. Those claim figures of over 200 miles per gallon, they, they are achievable, but you are gonna be paying to put that in, in, in electricity, but it's a lot cheaper than petrol. And I like the fact that it has the B mode regen. So I suppose their experience from the Zoe and the likes, a lot of PHEVs mightn't have that. It might be an automatic regen in the background that you've no control of. And when you take your foot off the accelerator, you can see charge going back into the car. So, and it also means that you don't need to use the brake pedal uh, nearly, I'd say 90% of the time where you would in, in a normal car. So it's cool that they have the uh, B mode in this. Anyhow, the average fuel consumption of this car is five liters per 100 kilometers. And that's using everything. It's pretty good though. Petrol engine, you could easily get that into four liters something. So for a heavy enough car, touring car, going to be carrying people, I've been carrying people and things in the boot and stuff like that. In fact, I've got stuff in the boot now and that's the fuel economy you're going to get. When you do floor, it just sounds like a, a normal petrol. It's not particularly groany or feels like it's struggling. I know some PHEVs, that isn't the case, but they've got that part of it absolutely bang on. If you want to overtake something, yeah, it gets a little bit noisier. Sounds a little bit laboured, maybe compared to just a normal petrol engine Renault. And there's a bit of road noise off the the tyres, but it handles pretty good. The wheels will spin if it's slippy again, because there's quite a lot of torque going through those front wheels. That's happened once or twice. And for a long car, the visibility at the back window is good. And in this version of it, I've got a lot of safety aids, such as blind spots, so rear cross traffic monitoring. So you, you feel like, especially with the camera, the camera's really clear too. Um, there's lots of aids to help you maneuver the car as well. So if this car's job is to get you around cheaper than you might have been able to do in the past and you want a bigger boot and you like Renaults and in fairness they have some pretty good deals going on at the moment with rates and stuff and you're going to get a five year warranty uh, it's, it's not a car you could write off you'd have to have it on your shortlist and that's where I'd, I'd say put it for the moment shortlist to check out some of the other plug-in hybrids if you're thinking of going that way and see what you think 100% though if fuel saving is what your next car purchase is about, then this car will not let you down in that area. It's very, very economical. So the question is, who's gonna buy one? Well, I think it'll do well with sales reps. You'll probably still get people wanting a diesel, but in terms of fuel economy, it'll do it. If you've got a dog and you need to keep them in the back away from everything, it'll do that. And maybe just you just prefer estate and touring options of the car and it'll do that. I think the price, is really really strong um, it needs the right wheels because they are hideous looking um, and I'd like to see it in a different color as well it's it's like it's a bit ambulance looking like so maybe in that nice Renault red in RS spec and that will kind of look pretty savage I think and uh, there's lots of practicality in it so there's lots going for it very very cheap for a hybrid solution 40 kilometer range and you can't really argue with that if you want to support the channel, there's ways to do it. I've got a little pop-up shop 
uh, for merch that you can buy, buy a mug or a water bottle, you know, there's tons of stuff there, but if you just buy anything, because uh, you'll help support this fully independent channel. Hit subscribe, obviously, if you haven't done so yet, and uh, let me know if you've got any comments or questions about this began, and I'll try and answer them in the comments below. Cheers for watching.